I'm going to be speaking about a um, four-channel SMT PA. So it's four PAs all on one die for the 28 gigahertz 5G band. And we're going to start by looking at the architecture of the four-channel PA. Then we'll show you some measured performance for the package part assembled onto a PCB, including all the effects of the PCB and the overmolding and the package. Then we'll look at the four-channel performance, and we'll end with some summary and some conclusions. So this is, th there'll be more photographs uh, later, some nice clear chip photographs. But that's the, the IC here, and it was packaged in to this five millimeter by five millimeter QFM package and assembled onto a PCB, and that's uh, Rogers 4003 material. And this is the architecture of the PA. So it, it was two symmetrical halves. The top half and the bottom half are identical. And there's a set of bias pads on the top, um, which, could, which feed the bias into the top two PAs. And a similar set of bias pads on the bottom here, which um, feed the bottom two PAs. Each PA has its own power detector at the output, and that will allow you to detect the power coming out of each of the PAs. It was realized on an enhancement mode process, so no negative voltage is required, all positive voltage. All the transistors were biased at 100 milliamps per millimeter IDS, and the process were, was an ED process from a Chinese foundry called Sanan IC. This is a photograph of the IC. Um, and there's one PA, two, three, four. At the output of each PA, you can't, very small here, but that's uh, the power detector. It's a foreshortened coupler. And so we detect some of the power and it, it goes into some uh, detector diodes on chip. There's a reference diode on there as well. So by looking at the difference between the two voltages, you get a temperature compensated voltage, which reflects the RF output power. So you've got two transistors at the output stage. These have got intrasource wires, so that's wires under the source fingers, keep the inductance nice and low, and it improves the thermal performance. You've got a single transistor driving these, um, and then a smaller single transistor at the input, and you've got some gain um, slope compensation matching network there. You can see the, the combining and matching here at the output to combine the RF power to these stages. You can see here how tiny the drain bias stub is. And by the time you're up at these frequencies, you, you can't really do anything sensible unless you just EM simulate things. And it starts getting quite involved and quite time consuming when you try to EM simulate something of that complexity. We ended up, we EM simulated a half of the chip, so that was two PAs. This is uh, a photograph showing the reference planes. So we did a, a PCB based TRL calibration, and we made a, a TRL calibration PCB, and we calibrated to the reference planes here and here. That is an over-molded plastic package. So the plastic is in contact with the surface of the IC. And in our stack up for our EM, we had the effect of the plastic on top of the IC. That was all taken into account. And I'm going to start by presenting some measured results for, for channel two here. This is the gain and matches across 20 to 36 gigahertz. And over the 26 to 29 gigahertz band, we see a 19.6 dB of gain, plus or minus 1.4 dB. And return losses are 10 dB or better. And this is for, as I mentioned, this is for the package PA salt that are attached to the PCB. This shows the a comparison of the measured to simulated performance. So the, uh, the, the blue trace is the simulated gain response. That's EM simulated, fully EM simulated, two PAs, so that's essentially half of that IC, 
and, and the performance does change when you add in the second PA because they are in such close proximity. And you can see that the gain response has moved up slightly in frequency and you can see it just rolls off slightly earlier uh, than we'd like. We're, we're currently looking at to what extent this is related to the PCB, which is quite a, a compact design as well, and to what extent it's uh, um, uh, an integral part of the IC. But the, these figures, you know, this 19.6 dB plus or minus 1.4 includes that um, little bit of roll off you see in there. We did some large signal measure performance. The graph on the left shows the power and the PAE at 1 dB compression. So there's a little bit of variation across frequency, but we're seeing a P1 dB of about 24.5 dB and about 19.5% PAE. And if you wind up the power and operate it saturated, you, you get 25.5 dBm, so an extra dB of power and a couple of percent more PAE, so you're up at 21.5. And this is the IP3, and it's round about 31 dBm, so that's about 7.5 dB more than IP3. We uh, were hoping for a little bit more of a gap than that. The, the models were telling us there'd be a little bit more of a gap, but uh, 7.5 is not uh, unreasonable for, for a PM process. And what we're seeing here is the IMD3 performance at different frequencies. And at 17.5 dBm output power, which is about 7 dB back off, we see that the IMD is minus 33, sorry, minus 30 dBc or better. And the corresponding PAE is 6%. This is the grass on, on the right. And um, that is what happens when you have a class AB amplifier and you back it off in order to operate with uh, adequate modulation fidelity um, for a complex modulation scheme. This shows the power detector performance. So when we plot the output power on the x-axis against the difference between the reference voltage and the detector voltage on a log scale, we see we get a nice linear characteristic, which simplifies the power monitoring. And uh, that works very nicely, and it works well over temperature. And so this is a summary of the single channel performance. 19.6 um, dB gain, 10 dB return losses, P1 dB 24.5, PSAT 25.5. Uh, PAEs and output IP3s, as I discussed, output IP3 about 31 dBm. So if we put four of these, the, the idea with having four of these in one chip is then you can run these into an array of four patches. And so with having uh, all four antennas of some form, so you will get uh, 10 times log to the base 10 of N, which is 6 dB for four patches you'll get an extra 6 dB of gain. So the effective output power then increases to 30.5 dB. And then the ERIP, if you take in the patch gain or, or the antenna gain, will go up another 6, 7 dB, depending on the gain of the individual antenna. Um, so um, this gives you a reasonable amount of total ERIP. So the sort of application w we envisage is that um, if you've got some form of transmit beam former with some driver amplifiers and some phase shifter, and then you drive in to a four channel millimeter wave PA and drive out through four antennas, then you can get yourself a healthy amount of transmit power and you maybe use some lower cost, um, lower power silicon devices to drive into it. So the sort of application uh, we, th we think is sort of user terminals or local area base stations and um, medium range base stations or wide area base stations and these antennas could be realized on a low loss laminate substrate and we, we've uh, made some antennas on such a substrate and th they work pretty nicely. So uh, to summarize, 
we've designed a, a four channel PA on the E mode PM process, 0.15 micron gate length of SAN and IC. It's a compact die, we've squeezed it all into 3.4 millimeters by 3.4 millimeters. Then we packaged it in um, a overmolded 5x5 five five pl plastic package. Um, I say then we packaged it, obviously we knew we were going to package it from the outset and we designed the IC to accept the uh, effect of the moulding compound and we designed the size such that you'd minimise the bond wire length for the lead frame in that package. Covers the full 28 gigahertz 5G band, good performance from 26 to 29 and potentially could be a good solution for 5G terminals uh, requiring uh, multiple PAs to generate a healthy level of VRIP. And that is all I was planning on saying.